James and I bought an old dilapidated Cory hay wagon offline and we rebuilt it and refurbished it and turned it into this. And in this video, we're gonna show you exactly how we did it. Courtney and I finally invested into a hay wagon. We've been looking for one, a decent one for quite some time, something with a very good running gear. So I seen this one for sale and it was a decent price. And we found something pretty cool about this hay wagon. Let me show you. We got this thing for really cheap off of Facebook Marketplace. I wonder why there's a hydraulic line on this thing. This is a hydraulic dump wagon. So it's pretty cool. I have not really seen one of these around here. Um, I actually tried to Google them and I, and I didn't see very many. So a couple things that I wanna redo on this trailer. As you can see here, we got a pinhole. Come right here. You can see a pinhole coming out of the cylinder here. So I need to uh, see if I can weld that up. So also, as you can tell, this is actually the full extended height of the hydraulic cylinder. So it's not that steep. We'd have a hard time dumping. So I'm actually gonna take this whole contraption here and I'm gonna slide it this way about a foot and a half. That way we can have a little bit steeper of a dump. We obviously got to repaint, redo the wood. We're just gonna redo this trailer and make it super nice before we're done. So I'm pretty excited about this little project. I, I like doing stuff like this. So I'm Courtney's gonna help me paint. She's my painter. But yep. we're gonna pressure wash this, get it stripped down. We're gonna re-weld this uh, hydraulic cylinder a little bit further down to have a steeper dump. But what I really like about this too is this is steel frame. Typically on a hay wagon you have basically a wooden frame and this is a solid steel frame because it's a dump wagon so it can handle a heck of a lot more weight. So that's what this is here. The running gear on this is excellent. Um, when I went and bought it uh, I went ahead and put grease and everything and I didn't show it on camera but I did have to re-tap and put a new grease fitting on this and I also re-tapped and put a new grease fitting here. So everything except the grease, which is a good thing, even the ones where I had to retap it. So this is gonna be a really nice trailer. I'm really excited about this project. And another cool thing is we're gonna hook this behind our hay baler and somebody's gonna be able to stand on the baler while the baler sets the, uh, the hay bales on the trailer, on the wagon. So pretty excited about it. Okay, we're out here with the Cory wagon today. We're gonna start taking the wood off of the top of this as it needs replaced. Uh, I think it's gonna be a little bit of a chore. I think a lot of these bolts are rusted into place. We're probably gonna shear off a lot of the heads. So no big deal, we'll get the grinder to everything and we'll get everything straightened out. So a little bit of demolition here on this wagon so we can put some new boards on it later. Um, I'm gonna clean this up once I get all the boards off of here and do a little bit of fabrication, so. All right, well, I made quick work of that wasn't too bad um, as you can see there's a lot of screws sticking up out of here a lot of them I either stripped the head or they just broke clean off uh, most of them were like that hardly any of them actually 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 came out so I'm gonna get my grinder I'm gonna grind all those off uh, make sure they're flush that way when I'm running screws later on um, I won't have any of the boards sticking up because of those screws so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that and then we'll start cleaning this thing up Okay, we got the wagon in the barn right now. We got all the wood tore off of it. So right now, I think that we are going to go ahead and take apart this hydraulic assembly here. We're gonna go ahead and get that completely off of this since we're gonna actually move it down a little bit to increase the steepness of the dump. Uh, I need to get all that off there and I need to take measurements for where I need to re-weld some bracketing to go ahead and move it. It's gonna be fairly heavy, so I'm probably gonna piece it out and uh, I'm gonna take the hydraulic lines. I might repack the cylinder. I have welding to do on it. There was a pinhole in the weld at the bottom. So we'll see what we can do here. As you can see, I disconnected this top. It took a lot for me to get these bolts off of there, <clears throat> but I finally got it. So now I'm gonna undo these pins here and see if I can get that whole contraption out of there. And hopefully I can pick it up. If not, I'll take the cylinder off first and then I should be able to pick it up. All 
right, a little bit of an update on the trailer. As you can see, I got the hydraulic assembly off of there. I went ahead and ground down where we're gonna be welding back up some brackets. We got everything cut and ready to go. But before I start welding some stuff together and tack welding, I wanna go ahead and get these holes cut out in these um, pieces here. So we need like a one and an eighth inch hole, which is basically imitating what we got right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this um, Bridgeport mill. Uh, it'll be a little bit easier. This thing's plenty strong enough. Um, should make quick work of this, so. All right, we got our pieces here. Cut uh, about one and three sixteenths. Okay, shut my converter down. So now I can start piecing this together on some of this square tubing and get it welded in place. I had some trouble with the bit, so it took me a little longer than I thought, but it's not too bad. Got my welder set up here. I'm gonna go ahead and take measurements, go ahead and get everything marked and where I want them. And uh, we'll get everything welded in place. Okay, I got this sitting exactly how I want it. So I went ahead and put this rod through here just to make sure everything was gonna line up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use this rod in place of these little things. They only had one of these going through that little section there. And here, I'm gonna go ahead and put a whole rod through there just to add, make it a little bit more rigid. I'm gonna go ahead and spot weld these into place right now. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get this positioned so I can get ready to spot weld it. So basically, like I said, I'm taking this, built it here and moving it back. I've got little three quarter inch blocks to put up there to make sure it's high enough. I'm gonna get this squared up and get it welded into place here. I'm just gonna spot weld it, waiting on the stick welder to show up tomorrow. Okay, so we've almost got everything tacked together, but I ran into a little bit of an issue here. So this angle, it should weld up against this here. And then I'm gonna have another piece of angle here. But to get this level, it's actually gonna stick up about a quarter inch, a little less than that. And it can't stick up above this because that's where the wood lays. So it's not a big deal, but, uh, and it might even work this way, but just, I don't want to chance it before I weld it in there. I don't want to have to grind it all down. So being as I have this bit already on the mill, and I think it's sharp enough. If it's not, I'll put a new bit in there. But um, I'm going to go ahead and take a quarter inch off of both of these pieces of angle. The other piece of angle, I believe, can hang down just slightly, and it shouldn't affect this. So we shouldn't have to take off anything there. And it's, I'm talking about that piece on the chair. So we're going to go ahead and see if I can mill this um, and take off some material here. All right, I got those milled down. As you can see, that nice finished top. So I took out a, about a quarter inch off and that should be good enough. And I went ahead and drilled my holes too. But we're gonna go ahead and tack the rest of this in place and I think call it quits for tonight. All right, I got everything tacked up in place here. Got the bolt holes lined up. So basically this is ready to be welded all the way through. So I'm gonna wait for tomorrow. Got a buddy coming over. He's gonna help me weld this up. He's got a stronger welder. We might even put 240 uh, plug out here so we can get some better penetration. So everything's looking out, looking pretty good. It wasn't too bad to, to move all that. I had people say, you shouldn't do that. It's a lot too much work but it's actually pretty easy. I had all that angle iron sitting around, so it's not like I had to spend money to do it. All right, we're out here working on the wagon today and I got Trent here from work. He's a way more experienced welder. So he's laying, laying some beads now. We rigged up 240 volt 
to the panel so we could have a little bit more power. And it's looking pretty good. All right, Trent left and he left me here with his welder and he showed me some things, which I really appreciate. Thank you very much, Trent. I'm gonna finish welding this. I'm gonna finish using the MIG for the hard stuff and then that flat part all the way across the top. I'm gonna see if I can stick weld it. He showed me a little bit how to do that. A little bit harder than MIG, but it'll be good to practice on. Um, everything should be plenty strong enough at this point. I, I feel pretty good about everything. All right, I got most of the welding done. I'm gonna switch over to stick here after the uh, welder cools down. But uh, I feel like I did pretty good on these welds. I don't weld very much. Looks like these have pretty decent penetration. So I am gonna switch over to stick and see if I can get this one all welded up. Well, for my first time doing some stick welding, I don't think it was too bad. Got some weird spots on there. Had trouble striking the arc a lot down here for some reason. Probably was the stick, but I feel like that looks pretty good compared to the MIG welds. So, not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. Might look ugly to a lot of people, but I'm sure that thing will hold. All right, I'm going to go ahead and weld this cylinder. I have a pinhole in it down here at the bottom. I went ahead and extended this all the way out. The oil is flushed out of this. And there's a pinhole right here. So, I'm just going to hit it with the stick. Let it melt in there. Hopefully that'll take care of the pinhole. And then on the other side, there's a huge crack on where it's welded in. I'm gonna try to hit that with the stick as well. And if I can't get real good with the stick, then I'll go ahead and pull out the MIG and try that. I ended up going to the MIG. The stick, I got the pinhole, but I went to the MIG over here just because I was having trouble striking an arc. So I'm gonna let this cool down for a little bit and then we're gonna test it. Make sure there's no air leaking out the bottom hole. And uh, obviously the ultimate test is gonna be putting it to use and hopefully we don't have any hole blowouts at the bottom there. But we'll give it a try here in just a little bit. We are gonna go ahead and make a rod that goes down through the bottom of this that connects it. They had two individual pieces before. I feel like a single rod is gonna be a little more rigid. So it needs to be about 12 and 3 eighths. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out of this stock here, one inch stock. That a good buddy of mine gave me from Ohio. So thank you for that. I knew I would find good use for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this about 12 and 3 eighths. All right, here's the shaft I just made. So you can see I got some holes for some cotter pins uh, and I got some washers. So I'll stick that in there and we'll get that part supported. All right, I'm finished installing the hydraulic system. So now I'm gonna see if this is gonna work. So I got it hooked up to my tractor. This is all air in there. So I'm gonna have to let it bleed out. I'm gonna try to do that just by going up and down with it a couple of times, see what happens here. I think we fixed the pinhole. I don't see anything leaking. And this is a much steeper dump now compared to before. As you can see here, this is where it was connected. Now I got it down here. So everything looks like it's operating fine. It's not rubbing anywhere. Looks pretty good. I'm happy with this. We got me a nice dump wagon now. All right, we're gonna begin pressure washing the wagon.
Today is the day that we're gonna start painting the wagon. Courtney's out here, she's my painter. I'm gonna help her a little bit, but first thing I've gotta take off these uh, wheels and uh, we're gonna also paint the wheels yellow, but I still have to clean them up. We're gonna start with the main frame first with green. We got Rustolian Farm implement paint and it is in the John Deere color. Uh, now these trailers, these quarry wagons, you can actually order them and get them custom colored. So we're gonna go ahead and put a John Deere paint on just cause we got John Deere equipment here. And I think that'll look really nice during our fall festival, be able to pull some people on our John Deere tractor with a John Deere wagon. So this is the quarry running gear. Um, we do have decals that we bought. We're gonna put on it after we're done. It's gonna look really nice. So uh, let's get to work. Okay, so we got the four tires off and I started painting over here. So far, so good. Woo, this is taking a while. There's so many nooks and crannies that need painted, but it looks really good what we have done so far. So now I'm just gonna get down here on the ground and work on painting everything underneath the bottom here. So this is what we got done yesterday. I gave up on putting the stuff underneath because we don't have one of those like rolly things that mechanics use on the ground. And I was breaking my back and neck to paint it. So I'm actually gonna go to the store and pick up one of those. But meanwhile, James is gonna spray the tires while I'm gone. So I've got this one taped off and I'm gonna get the rest of them taped off. Done. It took 30 minutes, but it was worth it because now these are gonna turn out really good. I always just line the tape up there and then put plastic bags on the other side so it gives it a nice good seal. All right, to the store. Okay, so James got the underneath of these done. I just got them flipped over and we're gonna spray this side. We're gonna repack the bearings on these. I'm sure they've probably never been repacked. I've pulled one off already. Completely dry on the inside. I'm surprised that the bearings were still good, but they were. So I'm gonna go ahead and repack these and then we'll get the paint them. Huh? Did you get the underneath painted? I did. I just finished the last section. I am wore out. Well, thanks for helping me with that. I was too fat to get underneath there. <laughs> Whatever. But let's pull this out and let's finish up painting the inside of the frame. And let's okay. slap some wood on here. I'm ready to end this painting project. Me too. I'm done wearing it. I'm covered. Oh well, it's okay. All right, the painting is done. Courtney did great. Everything looks good. The tires turned out amazing. Everything looks really good. So now we're about to go put some wood on here and I may not have all the nails just yet or the screws, but we'll get them. I just wanna make sure this wood, I think I'm gonna have to slice a couple boards down. So we'll use the sawmill to do it. Okay, so we got the first four boards on here. We need to cut off about an inch on these ones because it's too wide. We cut them all a little bit bigger because we knew it would shrink obviously as it dried and we didn't want the gaps in here to be too big. So now we're just going back and cutting off a little bit of excess for that one and this one over here and then we'll get the middle put on. We're using this trusty, what is that called? Decking bender tool? I have no idea. It pulls the decking boards tight when you're laying deck boards, but it works great for this as well. I mean, this is oak, but I can barely move that. To close uh, that gap. Sit this on here like this to give you leverage. I mean, in it, it's no problem. That's amazing. So, works great.
We're headed to the sawmill to cut down those last three boards. Got the middle one in. Now we just gotta fill in both these sides. Testing out the hydraulics, testing out the power of the tractor. We probably got about four ton or so, yeah, more than that, probably maybe five ton of gravel on the back. Hopefully it all doesn't fall off when I go over this little incline. All right, we're gonna see if the hydraulic dump works on the tractor. I'm gonna pull it forward and Elias is gonna film me dumping it right here. Unbelievable how good this trailer looks. We're doing the last thing to it right now. James, what are you building back there? Um, just the back of it so we got something to lean the hay against when we're putting hay up. Okay, looks great. Let's do it. Oh my goodness, this looks good. Great job, he got the tractor sign on it. And now he's painting it. Babe, what are you painting that with? Car oil, actually this was in my K&A, I changed the oil the other day, so. Oh. 